Now, the rule is bad for the U.S. candle industry because basically it inserts big government into the marketplace, which we all know is never a good thing. It's based on uh, uh, some language that was originally negotiated in the 2008 Farm Bill, but it went beyond that. Matter of fact, it brought back language that was defeated by Congress. So it's also bad because it sets a precedent that Congress can make a decision in their debates and vote on it and vote something down like they did in this case, but it can still come back to life. So that's dangerous not only in cattle marketing, but all the other issues that we're working on right now, from environment to taxes to trade. So that's another concern that we have. And then also we have a concern about just what this means for everything that the industry has done over the past 30 years to really bring up and, and develop an alternative marketing arrangement system and branded products to be able to allow producers to get paid for the value they put on their cattle. This rule is going to go a long way to taking that away and taking us back to a commodity cattle business, which none of us want. What we have to remember is there is a trickle-down effect here in regards to this rule, because everything that restricts the ability for producers to engage in marketing contracts, alternative marketing arrangements, whether it's directly with the packer or whether it's a feeder, that's going to impact uh, all producers, because that trickle-down effect of what they get paid is a result of the deals that are made higher up the chain. So that's why all producers need to understand that if you invest in genetics, if you do the management practices that put uh, more value on your animals, you're going to get impact, uh, impacted by this rule. And so that's why we say that a lot of times uh, Gypsa is going after the packers. This time they went after the packers, but they hit the cow-calf guys. We know what happened to demand in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and one of the things that we did as an industry, we started to listen to our consumer. And by listening to our consumer, we came up with programs that put the product on the table that met their needs and desires. And that has given a lot of added value to producers across this country. Big producers, little producers, uh, all producers. And the way this rule is tailored and the liability changes that are put in place here and some of the restrictions on the way packers can market cattle back and forth, that is going to impact boots on the ground ranchers that are taking the time to enter into marketing arrangements, marketing alliances. Because if all of a sudden the packers stop paying for quality, then that trickles all the way down the chain. And then there's no need to invest in genetics. There's no need to invest in the more intensive production methods because you're not going to get rewarded with a higher price for your cattle. So that's why we're concerned with this rule because it's going to take away a lot of these options for the small producers to get more value in their pocket. And if we take away that opportunity and we take away these branded programs, then that leaves the consumer with the very product they told us they didn't want 20 and 30 years ago. So across the board, we're going to see an impact of this rule on all segments of the chain, all the way down to the small producers and our consumers. You know, NCBA was one of many groups on both sides of this issue that came together during the 2008 Farm Bill and negotiated the language that this rule was supposed to have been based off of. But even though that's the case, this rule has gone far beyond that. As I said, Congress voted down several of the provisions that are actually in this proposed rule right now. And uh, because of that, even though there are some provisions that we do like in terms of arbitration, there's no way we can support this rule because we don't see a way that we can fix it and then uh, clean out the stuff that really impacts our business, which is the restrictions on the marketplace, big government setting, what is a fair price for contracts, and what we eventually see is going to be a trial, law a trial lawyer's bonanza here. Now, what I would tell all producers is there's a lot of rhetoric out there right now. You're hearing from USDA, you're hearing from some other groups that this is about protecting the small producer and adding transparency in the marketplace. As we look at it, we don't, we don't see that at all. Matter of fact, when you look at anything that comes out of Washington, D.C., whether it's legislation or proposed rule, you can't take it at face value. And these comments are based on face value. You really have to kick the tires and look under the hood and find out what the unintended consequences are. And the unintended consequences on this rule are that the government's going to come in and they're going to become the deciding factor on what is a standard or fair price in the cattle markets and what terms and conditions contracts should have. They're going to open up liability so trial lawyers can come in and sue whoever they want to if somebody just thinks it's an unfair that another producer is getting a price that they're not getting. And once again, it's going to take away everything that we have done as an industry to build marketing alliances, marketing arrangements, and contracting opportunities to really allow producers to get paid for putting value on their animals, that very value that 
the consumer has been willing to uh, pay for for several years now. You know, this rule is really about three things. It's about big government coming in and telling you as a producer how you can market your cattle, where you can market your cattle, and how you market your cattle. It's going to introduce trial lawyers into our marketing system because it changes the liability to a, to a place where if somebody just thinks that the price that you got paid is unfair to them, then that's all the basis they need to sue you. So the trial lawyers are going to be all over that left and right. And the last thing you want are trial lawyers coming in and also helping dictate the marketplace. And finally, it takes away your opportunity to contract, plain and simple. Contracting opportunities, marketing alliances, branded beef programs were all put in place by producers, not the packers. And so even though USDA thinks they're doing something good for the producers here, in actuality, it takes away your options to market your cattle. That's it in a nutshell, plain and simple. What you need to do is you need to contact USDA and say, keep big government out of the marketplace. Let's enforce the Packers and Stockyards Act like we have right now, but let's not add any more layers of bureaucracy, especially layers of bureaucracy that are going to impede cattle producers and hurt cattle producers, not help. When you look at this rule and what it means to the American Angus Association, the programs that this association has put together, certified Angus beef, everything that they have done to brand their product, what this rule means is everything that you have done over these years to build your brand goes away. Because what you have done is you identified what the consumer wanted, you put the programs in there to provide that product to the consumer, and now USDA is telling you that that is no longer worth anything, that they want commodity cattle, and that if you have higher value than your neighbors, then you're not going to get paid for that value. And if you happen to get paid a little bit more and your neighbor thinks it's unfair, then they can sue. They can sue USDA, they can sue, sue the buyer, and they can probably sue you at some point in time. So that's why it's important that you as members of the American Angus Association engage here because this rule is going to take away your opportunities to continue all the great things that you've done over the past several years to build your brand.